Hello, friends. I'm Bernard Watt of Sports Talk with E Watt Entertainment, along with Rob the Man Media and Coach Dre. I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. And if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and Rob the Man Media channel, and share the videos with your friends if you don't mind. Uh, we're just going to say a special thanks to our sponsor tonight, State Farm Insurance. Uh, the agent there is John Fisher. For all of your insurance needs and audio, home, and life insurance, call 706 819 4044. We want to thank State Farm for sponsoring the show tonight. And if you have a business of your own or you just want to sponsor the show individual, contact me or Rob uh, Demand Media or Coach Drake. And we will handle those things for you. And we don't mind sharing your information on our platform. No, we don't. So I want to thank John Fisher and State Farm for supporting us. And I want to thank his wife. Uh, his wife was tuning in to my broadcast, well, our broadcast, ever since we've been doing this. And she went and told John, hey, Let's support Bernard. And they did it. And we appreciate them for doing that. So, like I said, if you got a business, you want us to advertise for you on our show, just contact us. We don't mind. All right? All right. Let me take this down and do what we do. I can bring my man, Rob B. God be patient with me. Try to get it down. So we can talk about Coach Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. I got to get me a producer. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I got to do. <laughs> this thing is something there. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in. Let me see, can I get Rob up? Yo, yo, yo. What's up, Rob, the man media? Good, good, Happy good, Easter, man. everybody. Happy Easter to you, uh, Rob. Yeah. We got an exciting show tonight and we want to thank everybody for tuning in. And I'm going to let you uh, have an open statement before we start the show. Go ahead. Man, welcome, man. Happy Easter, everybody. Appreciate everybody that's tuning in right now. Wherever you're tuning in from, let us know. Uh, man, but just appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Uh, sorry I haven't been live all week, but here, we here. All right, we here. We got a show with my man B. Watts. Coach Dre will be in the building here in just a minute, man. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Coach. Uh, Dre be waiting on you. But uh, check this out, Rob. Uh, I seen I seen a video come across my uh, my screen, and everybody was texting me and inboxing me. They say the man is in the building. I kept saying, who? I'm at church, you know. I said, who in the building? Who in the building? They say he done made it. I said, I'm texting. I'm at church. I said, who don't make it? They said, Warren Sapp is in the building. <laughs> I said, man, that Rob, no, he did. I said, I asked Rob two weeks ago for Warren Sapp going to make it. And it looked like Rob be knowing what he's talking about. So, Rob, what you think uh, about Warren Sapp? And before you uh, give your comments on him, Warren Sapp is coming as a senior control, senior quality control analyst. And, man, what kind of impact you think uh, Warren Sapp is going to have on this uh, Colorado Buffalo team. And it's going to be a major impact. Um, yes, um, he is in Boulder. <laughs> um, he is there. Uh, they had meetings today. Uh, so you can't be um, nothing but excited. Um, let's see what this defensive line um, is going to do. The position that he's in, you know, he's going to be able to come and go, be able to coach on the field, be in the recruiting, and, uh, recruiting world too. So He's going to have his hands on everything. Um, so it's good to see. So we can all please stop asking where's Warren Sapp at because he's finally in Boulder. All right. He's going to be there for, you know, remaining of the spring up to the spring game. Um, they're going to have a little break out to the spring game. So he's going to be there. Y'all going to see him on film. Y'all going to see him on this and that, you know. So uh, y'all can stop asking the question, where is Warren Sapp? Why he ain't there? He's there. All right, that's all I got to say about it. Go ahead, Coach Dre. Coach Ray, 
What's going on, man? What's going on, oh, man? Happy Easter to all y'all. Uh, I mean, I've been told people to relax and be patient and, you know, good things come to those who wait. For all you haters out there who thought Prime was lying and he was just capping, I, you know, there you go. He there, he gonna be there, you know his title. Um, and with the new NCAA rules, I think that was the reason what, I think that's what was kind of, I think maybe that was what was holding up. It was trying to get everything in line and get everything, uh, everything ironed out so it wouldn't be no discrepancies. But you know, he there, we finna go to work. I mean, that's all there is to it. And that's a all big right, up right. for, that's a big up for some recruits. Big up it for is. some recruits. It is, it is. Now, uh, before we get into the program, I'm still stay right there on Warren Sapp. Uh, what kind of effect do you think he's going to have with the defensive line? He's going to have a major effect with the defensive line. Um, not just this year, but the incoming recruits um, that they got coming. Um, and that's the part where people don't talk about enough. Is the recruiting work for Colorado is about to heat up the month of April. You're going to see a lot of players visiting um, in and out um, each week. Uh, there for a couple of days on official visits. Don't be surprised if you see a couple commitments coming this month. Uh, but this is going to make a huge impact on the, on the defensive line, but also in the recruiting world because a lot of recruits was wanting the same thing. Is more stop coming? Are people, you know, telling the truth or things like that? So that's been circling around. But now that you know that he's there, people see him on videos. Um, expect to see defensive linemen coming on visits um, the month of April. You might, you might get a, a commitment or two. Can't say for sure, um, but just know that you know some players are gonna come visit. I mean, it, it's big. I mean, I think uh, who wouldn't want to learn from what arguably is the great, the greatest guy to play to follow the three technique they ever play in the NFL. Um, and he demands, he demands respect when he walks in the room. Uh, and kids just respect that. Uh, it's not much that they're not going to say. And now when you sit in front of a parent and you got Deion Sanders and you're a defensive lineman and he walks in Warren Sapp and Warren Sapp tell you, son, I can make it. I can make you make it happen. You know, besides the other stuff that Coach Prime already preaching, there's no better feeling in the world. So uh, it's big for recruiting. But I, I'm more excited for those kids to get to learn from a guy like that. Uh you know, he a Florida boy, so you you know how I feel about that. He a Florida boy, so you know what, what it's going to be. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, man, I'm so excited about that. Hey, I got to give a shout-out to my supervisor. So she's being faithful, man. She stay up. So she had to be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning. She's been watching us on Sunday ever since we've been on the air. That's Mary Jo. I want to say hello to her. She asked about you, Rod, the other day. I said, how you going to ask me about Rod? And, and did my show. <laughs> she said, I can't get the coach. I know the coach, but I don't know his name. <laughs> I said, that's Coach Dre. He's from Florida. She said, okay, then, okay. She said, I don't know much about football. She said, do what she said. Check this out, y'all. She said, ain't this where the quarterback shoot the three-point shot? I said, please, please don't. Please don't say that to nobody else no more. You know we ain't taught you that like that. <laughs> then she started laughing. So I want to give a shout out to her. That's Mary Jo. And also my assistant director for where I work. Man, I was coming out the office and uh, well, uh, Mary Jo office and I ran into the system manager. He said, but no, I said, yeah. Did I say you on TV? I said, TV? I said, I don't, I don't do TV no more. I'll be on YouTube. He said, yeah, it's on your TV. I I watch YouTube on TV and I saw you on your, I said, okay, man. I said, Rod, don't put me out there, man. I said, Rod and Coach Dre put me out. He said, I'll be checking y'all out every uh, Sunday night. I said, okay, I appreciate it. Also, I want to say a good shout out to Rosie Hernandez, who sponsored our show on last uh, week. She also be watching, and Dr. Angela McIntyre, who is a veterinary also. She told me she'd be watching every Sunday, so I'm going to give her a shout out also. So, but uh, here she is in the chat right now saying, Hey, but uh, uh, that's Rod the Man Media and Coach Drake, Dr. McIntyre. Thank you for tuning in. All right. So, uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in and thank everybody who participate in the chat also. And later on, a lot of people, I didn't begin a lot of, a lot of response about that, uh, 
<laughs> about that uh no question that we were throwing up during uh during the break uh last show so we're gonna do that again rapid fire so they want to participate this time in the chat so we i got a couple questions i'm gonna throw at y'all so let's get into the show and this is my first thing i want to talk about uh the first week of spring practice was last last week and it's over i just want to know what are y'all assessment of the first week practice from the coaching side and the size of the players and the speed and the relationship that those players are having this year. Start out, Coach Dre. Um, what you see is you see a, a, a star difference in what you saw last year. What you saw last year was something that was put together very quickly and came together very quickly. This is something that's uh, been marinated. It's been seasoned a little bit. Um, the coaches are way more acclimated to the players. They know what they have. They know what uh, what they can get out of these guys. From the players' standpoint, it's a whole different football team. You see the excitement. You see the aggression. You see the you see they they chomping at the bit to get at it, and that's what you want. They taking a lot of stuff personal. Again, they're listening and they're not talking. And when and when you get a football team that's doing that, listening and not talking. Believe me, them kids, they, they taking receipts, man. They taking receipts. And uh, But you see a, a star different from what you saw last year and what you see this year in the coaches, in the players. Uh, and you see that with the two coordinators you got, you got uh, kids getting NFL ready. And that's that's all, I think that's every kid's dream that when they go to college, they want to get NFL ready. And, and that's what you see these kids getting. And Coach Prime is always giving that. So you see a star's difference from something that's rushed, like we say, you don't want from something that's microwave, and something that's been that's that's been seasoned, and they taking their time, and they put it in the oven. So that's the big difference. Microwave last year, oven fix this year. Uh, to me, the biggest difference you see um, and that you really notice is how much more teaching um, is being done this year. And they don't have to walk each player through each process because you have returning players to understand how practice goes. And even the players they brought in, understanding that we're on a mission uh, from day one. There ain't no playing around. There ain't no joking. Yeah, we can joke. We can have fun. But when we get on it, when we get inside those lines, it's game on. And so when you start to look at, you know, what you see on the field from last year to this year, it's tremendously totally different. Um, the, the body size, the body types from last year to this year is completely different. Um, you have, you know, a bunch of talent that you knew ain't going to be there versus this year. You got talent that you know is going to be there. Now, you're looking at your bottom 20 and saying who's going to leave, right? But you also don't have a lot of people bringing the team down, bringing the team backwards, and, and you see moving forward. So when you're watching these these groups and you're seeing the teaching that's going on from these skill coaches um, in position, you see a lot of these players paying attention to the to the details. Where last year, you know, coaches were getting upset, having to teach the same thing over and over and over repetitive. So you could, you could see a lot of improvement from just that standpoint alone. Um, the speed, it's just everybody understanding their assignment, everybody's understanding their job. So the speed has picked up. So it looks like everything is moving much faster, most crystal. It's just because players are paying attention to details. And that's what you got to love coming from this football team. All right. All right. Also, uh, let's talk about, uh, let me get your, now before they started spring practice, uh, Well Out Media was showing videos of their strength and condition program. What kind of impact do you think Coach Mo? Doing that strength, uh, stretch, uh, strength and condition program. What kind of impact he had on the players this year? Uh, it's Robert. major. I mean, it's, it's major impact. You know, going from year one to year two, um, in a strength and uh, program, you could tell that a completely away. Like how how much of a difference, right? Some of them, you know, you're trying to get some of that body fat off off of them, get them into shape. The ones that's injured, getting them in the recovery stage to get them healthy, to be ready to go. Uh, some of them is just building strength overall, right? Putting an extra 10 to 15 pounds on players from last year. When you look at like Kamani McClain, what his size was last year to put an extra 15 pounds of muscle, you know, or eight to nine pounds of muscle on him um, so he can last throughout the season, so he can go out there and perform at a high level. And so when you look at the strength and conditioning, you know, that's really what they're doing is focusing on, 
you know, putting muscle on some of these people, dropping some of the fat on certain people to make to make sure that they can last longer in the game and perform at a high level. I mean, at the end of the day, Coach Moe is probably one of the best uh, strength and conditioning coaches in the country. He's a uh, similar great staff. Uh, like like Rob said, what you see is kids' bodies changing. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Seton hasn't been there but three months, and he told you he put on 11 pounds of just muscle. Right. And so that lets you know just how good of a strength and conditioning program that Coach Mo was running. You see Travis Hunter done got a little bigger. Like he say, Kermani has definitely got bigger, faster, stronger, and that's what you're trying to do. And he doesn't, he doesn't cut any corners. And he doesn't hold back, and he doesn't he doesn't sugarcoat it for him. He lets them know straight up, this this is the kind of team we're gonna be. What y'all doing right now is the type of team we're gonna be. So you saw kids push themselves uh, way harder and way stronger. And what I'm what I'm telling you is, it's contagious when you got that going on in the weight room. Because if you see this man over here doing this, hey man, I I might can't live what he's living, but I sure want to maximize my potential. And that's what you see going on in that weight room and with the strength and conditioning. Uh, like you say, the, uh, you see how big Dylan is getting. You feel now you feel like he can run in between those tackles and stuff like that right there. So you got to feel good about this strength and conditioning coach. And ain't no doubt about it. Uh, we had the best strength and conditioning coach in the, in the nation. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I'll pick back on that. Um, how many players wanted to put the extra work in last year? At this time last year, right? right? That's the biggest key to tell you that the strength and condition doing their job because you got kids motivated to put the extra work in. And a lot of people didn't want to put the extra work in. They was running from the work. These kids are motivated and want to be with the work and put the extra in and on off days putting the extra work in and being in a weight room. And you didn't see that last year. And that's you got to give a big ups to Coach Moe and his staff. Yeah, they did an excellent job, man. I think they're from Georgia. I think Coach Brown brought him from Georgia. Somebody was telling me. Well, well, but, Coach Mo, Coach Mo comes from Coach Mo came from Georgia. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but Coach I know Coach Mo. His sister came from Georgia too. Okay, it's so yeah, they come from University of Georgia. Uh, what happened was Coach Coach uh, Coach had a strength conditioning coach at Jackson, and I think he got he got a job somewhere else. He took another job, and Coach and Coach Prime reached out to Coach Mo, and he came down to Jackson. And uh, like you say, he turned that he turned that program around, strength and conditioning wise. So uh, uh, during the winter time, he's like the head coach. He's really running. He run. He you know the kids check in with him. Coach Prime is there, but there's certain rules and regulations that hinder the, the head ball coach. So Coach Mo is there, and like you say, when you can get kids to come do what they need to do on their off days, that's when you know you got a hell of a strength and conditioning program. I agree. I agree with you 100%. Well, I like y'all, man. Y'all, I only have to tell y'all what I be going to be talking about. Y'all come out just like that. That's why I say, man, I appreciate y'all, man. You just don't know. Y'all make the show. It ain't about me. It's about y'all. But check this out. We got a comment right here. T. Nicole, I guess she wanted y'all to uh, follow her. I don't, I, this name ain't familiar with me. She said, Kamadi won't be running for Tigers this season. He put on a little weight. He look like he don't put on the weight. But, uh, but this, and the also, uh, this the biggest uh, thing with him. This the biggest thing with him. And you know, a lot of people give me slack because he a Florida kid, but Kermani didn't get there till late. He got right. there right. He he didn't he didn't have the whole summer workout. He got there maybe a week right before fall camp was supposed to start. Now he was working out, but he hadn't got any of that coach mode, uh strength and conditioning, none of that. And so he was behind the eight ball. I'm not gonna make no excuses for my jit, but he he just is now coming into his own. He is just not coming into his own, and he's 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 taking things seriously, and 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 he's he's dedicated to what he got going on, and so uh, we I'm I'm so proud of that kid for what he's doing on and off the football field. You you gotta be you gotta be proud of what he's doing on, on both sides. Why is so about air? Why is so everybody critical of? Uh, Kamadi, uh, he's he just he a kid right around. now. He, he, he I is, know he but he, because, because... I ain't saying they critical. I guess they just noticed something. And you'll be surprised that uh, the females that give me feedback when we go out there, they more knowledge of Colorado than me, man. I be saying, I don't know how they... 
They said that we be watching Raw and Show too. Yeah, yeah, okay, dude. At, at, at the end of the day, they critical because he a five star. He was a five star coming out of high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He, is, he was a five star. And, and people just believe because you a five star that you you post it, it just translates. It just does it. It's just like anything in life. It just ain't gonna translate like that. And then the kid was behind the eight ball. If you gave, if Kermani would have been there in the in the in the in the summer at the beginning and getting all that work in, I think we'd have saw a better version of him. You started seeing him get better and better uh, when when he started when he's and then when you like I say when you start listening and stop talking. You get what I'm saying, but you know he and, and what you said B is the biggest thing. He's still a young man. He's still he learning. He's still he gonna make mistakes. Uh, so you know, I I mean people just people just like to bring people down. That's what I just come to realize. But 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 well, it's gonna thing. be all right. Here's the thing, coach. Right, we all know the truth, man. Players develop at their own speed, and that's what a lot of people don't want to fathom. Right, they don't want to acknowledge. Just because you have a star coming out of high school does not mean it's going to translate that you're going to develop faster yeah. than this other player. And so when you look at that, you start comparing players. And that's why you don't compare players, right? You they What they did was they compared Travis coming out of high school and coming in and stepping in and be able to play and then Cormani. And it's two totally different situations. Travis needed surgery. He just happened to play the first game. He still had surgery on his ankle. Sat right. on a couple games, came yep. back. But when yeah, you, you look at when you but look at the talent early. level, yeah, when yeah. you look at the talent level, that's what they look at. Well, Travis Hunter did why Kamani can't do it. And instead of right. looking at did they come on canvas at the same time? Did the process was the process the same time? And it wasn't. And those right. were a lot of people forgot about because Travis Hunter didn't even know how hurt he was until he went through medicals at Jackson State and they found out and then they put him through the process. To say, hey, you need to go get this cleaned up now so it doesn't affect you long term. And that's that's due to Coach Prime looking out for the kid instead of saying, no, you need to play. And this is what it is because you're a five star. So you got to give credit with credit due on that standpoint. But we just got to slow down the process because each and every player develop at their own speed. I agree with you on that. I agree with you 100% on that. I think he's just a little young and. Everybody looking at because he was a five star, he supposed to be on right out there and start it. But like I say, Coach Prime ain't giving you no position. You got to go out there and earn it. And I right. definitely believe he's gonna he's gonna have to earn it this year because he got a lot of competition over there this year. But I don't want to get into that right now. I want to move along with the outline that I got. Then we'll get into that. All right, the quarterback Shadur Stanley. He finished last season with thirty five hundred yards, thirty TDs, and three intercepts. Do you think? He can put up those same numbers this year. Start me out, Drake. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's the average. I mean that's what he's been doing. I don't expect nothing. I don't expect nothing. That's the that's the bottom part of it. That's the that's the floor. The ceiling is he could. Oh go, yeah. He could, throw, he could throw for four. He could throw for four. <laughs> then go for forty. You get what I'm saying? Go back and look at his numbers each year, at Jackson. That's just that. That's his floor. That's what he gonna give you that. Shador Sanders gonna give you that. He's gonna give you that okay. 35 to 30 anywhere from 35 to 3,700 and 30 anywhere from 30 to 35 touchdowns. The, the, okay. the, the, the hot the high mark is that he could go out there and actually throw for four thousand and score and, and throw for 40 touchdowns. That's just and that's just being honest. Uh he he is he is as advertised. There, there is no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Um he's what you want as a quarterback. He got his head on. He got his head on on right. Uh, you see, even when on vacation, even on vacation, he working on his craft. He take right. his quarterback coach with him so he can make sure he's getting right. He ain't just taking no breaks and he ain't just taking no nap. He he like again. He they listening to the whisper. They listening to the whispers, and they hear. But, but Rob, you get what I'm saying? Right. I don't mean to cut you off, but Rob, thirty five hundred yards, thirty touchdowns. Only three interceptions. I, I think he can improve on it, um, and that's just me, honestly. Wow. I, I, you don't go, go you know, coach Gray on the same level. This is okay. Me. I believe we're going to get this running game started for him to have you more explosive plays to have more big, big plays. Think about it. You're doing this with no running game last year, 
So imagine right. put adding in a running game to this, right? Being able to move first downs. And he didn't play every game last year. So he stays healthy and play every game this season. And you add in a running game, it's only gonna make it easier because what guess what? When you load the box up to try to stop the run, guess what happened? You give us one on one with the receivers that we got on the outside, you're just asking for six to get put on the board. And so the, the stat line could be better than what it is right now. I got to do it going over 4,000 yards. I don't care what you say, how you Ooh. look at it, but I got him going over 4,000 yards this season. Um, I look at this season just like his last season at Jackson State. We're going to have a 1,000-yard runner, but we're also going to have a Shador Sanders going over 4,000. 4,000 run? Yeah. Going up a lot of yards. But he went for thirty seven. He went for thirty seven at Jackson. That 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 uh that last yeah, year. Yeah, I, I, okay, I agree with you on that. I got you. Like that, and what I'm saying is, it when you can run the ball, like you say, it it makes safety start to cheat up. You start coming up. You start coming up because now I don't know what you know. I'm in a lost world. So now, with the like you say, with the weapons we got, if you you trying to stick Miller, Shepard. Western, I mean, the, them eight that I'm thinking about, any of them one on one, okay, you know, and you give it, and, and then if these guys are passionate about blocking like they like they like they seem to me they are, if he got time. If you give Shador, if you give Shador Sanders time, you in trouble. Look at that, that. That's what we saying. He went for 35 with no offensive line, right? And no running game. <laughs> he no right. no, but still, though, them like them like man, them highs the trophy one of them. That's what we're telling you. That's what okay. we're telling you. Hey, for for him to even for listen, for him to even be in the Heisman conversation, he's gonna have to go. He's gonna have to go above forty two hundred, just to be in the conversation, right? And win. So if you're saying he's a Heisman Trophy winner, he's gonna throw it for four thousand. That's how you gotta look at it. But you also gotta look at the improvements of this the improvements from last year's team to this year's team, right? The biggest improvement is going to be our offensive line, regardless of how right. like you look at it. Now it's still to be proven, right? It still needs to, we got still got to go out there and show it. But you give Shador our offensive line and protection and be able to run the ball, we're gonna it just the, the sky's the limit in that sense. Wow, man, I hope so. I'm I'm rooting for the guy, man. I like I like the way he uh he had progressed in his uh tender in college football. And when I was looking at the well off media think the last practice, how quickly the ball was coming out of his hands. Man, that just impressed me. Uh see how much he has grown as a quarterback. Okay, let's look at uh let's look at the running back room. Uh Alton McAllister, man, he looked real good in the drills and and the workout program they got going on. Dylan Epps look like he done got bigger. Got Savion Wilkinson. He's back and he got that freshman, Michael. Man, he he really don't impress me too. So, what y'all think about Alvin McCaskey? Is he gonna be the front runner, or is, or is he uh, he gonna get the majority of the touches this year? Coach Ray, uh, he should. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. That's what he was brought there to be. He was brought there to be the kid that you saw at Houston his freshman year. Um, uh, again, it goes back to what we talked about when Coach Prime. When you listen to him talk. He tell y'all the truth. Just listen. The kid wasn't healthy last year. Okay, I hear people say, oh, well, y'all ran him down there on special teams. That's straight line. That's not moving side to side and getting, you get what I'm saying, getting hit in the hole, getting rolled up on. He wasn't healthy enough to be a running back last year. So I, I'm going to do my best so I can have him at his best his next season. So that's why I expect to see the best out of Alan McCaskill because he's put in the work. And he sees and he sees the uh what he can do. If you go back and watch that Houston tape, you see that kid is the real deal at running back. Um when you're talking about uh Dylan Edwards, he can do it all. He can do it all, he can do it all, and that's why I think he got bigger so he can take some of that load. Again, Savion Washington is a is a thousand yard back. Yeah. Whether it's Jackson, whether it's Jackson State, I it's a thousand yards. You understand right. I me? Mean? So I don't, yeah. don't want to hear about that's a Jackson State. He ran for a thousand. And then, like you say, that kid, Michael, I, I, I love that kid to death. I think that kid's going to yeah. be the real deal. Um, I, think, 
Yeah. Man, he got he can, he got Ross. He got a chance to start. I think at least he, he gonna get some touches. He gonna he gonna I, be in the rotation. He gonna be in the rotation. He definitely gonna be in the rotation. There ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. But that's the kind of kid and the kind of character that Coach Prime examples. If you go back and you watch the well off media, I think a lot of people they don't watch it. He went over to the running back room and he looked at the, the young freshman. And he said, "Can you lead this room?" That kid shook his head and said, "Yes." And ever since then, you saw the look in this kid's eyes that I can do anything I want to, and this coach believes in me. All I got to do is go out here and show it. But this Alton McCaskill show, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. This is your. I got him going for a thousand. Ain't no ifs, ands, and buts about it. I got him Ooh. going for a thousand. Rod, 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 Rod. Yeah, in the in the running back. Don't go for a thousand. Yeah, I like I said, I got a I got a running back going for a thousand. And it's Alton McCaskill. I just think it's Alton McCaskill's job to lose. At the end of the day, um, he's he's one hundred percent healthy. There ain't no excuses. Now, what I think they will do is limit, you know, spring practice, how many touches he get to make sure he's ready to go for the fall, um, and it's just as well as the fall because they they want him ready to go for the regular season. Uh, what you like, what you see on video, is you see the explosiveness coming back. And that's what you didn't see last year. When he would get when he would get touches, you didn't see that explosive get off burst, right? Um, Austin McCaskill is he once he puts that foot in the ground and hit it, he hitting it. Um, yeah. And you didn't see that from him last year. So um, this year, you know, I, I expect him to you know be ready to go, be explosive. Um, but them limiting him in spring and fall practice to make sure that he's one thousand percent ready to go for the season. Um, but if he's not, we got we got people that can come in. You got your Savions, you got your Dillons, you you got your Michaels in that situation. I do think we do add another running back um, in the spring portal. We don't need it, but I think we just ultimately add one just just for injury purposes, right? Um, right. Whether that's whether that's a young running back or a veteran running back, we're gonna add at least one more into that room. So you gotta like what we see that in that running back room, the competition, um, them pushing each other. But it's Arthur McCaskill's job to lose in that running back room. Now, uh, let's talk about Dylan Epperson. Uh He don't got bigger. I got faster. Now, in passing situation, when the ball is not going to him, you think he can handle the blitz? He going to be able to pick up blitz this year? Or last year, he really could. He missed, a, he missed several, several pickups on blitzes. So uh, what y'all think about that? Again, y'all asking a freshman, a true freshman, to come in here and give y'all what y'all that that some two and three year backs ain't giving you. You understand what I'm saying? At his weight last year, and it wasn't that he wasn't throwing himself in there. He wasn't trying. I could see if he was just he was just olaying the block, but he wasn't olaying the block. He just didn't have enough coming with him when he when he got there for a defensive. And then we talking about you talking about two ninety to three hundred pounders. Coming at you, you asking this one hundred and you know seventy five pound running back the, the block? No, that ain't happening. It ain't like he wasn't throwing himself in there to try to block. He just didn't have everything with him. This right. year, I think he will because he put on the pounds, he put on the muscle. But again, you got two solid, you got two solid guys on passing downs like that. I think that's when you see more of a Savion Washington. You might see a Michael Welch in there on on downs okay. like that. I think uh, Dylan Edwards is going to be more of a, uh, a all-around ball player, and what I'm saying by that is you can line him up in the backfield. You can, you can, he can be in the backfield. You can, you can motion him out to the slot. You can bring him in motion, give him a jet sweep. I think in 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 Pat Sherman type offense, that's the kind of guy he's going to be. So, uh, but on them, I think he can't hold his own. I think if you asking him to do it. He gonna try to do it to the best of his ability, and I can't ask him to do no no more than what he's been given. Like I say, you ask, you, we were asking a friend that was a freshman, and, and like I say, I know what everybody gonna say is football. You put him out there, yes, he's still a freshman. And if you look at the pack, if you look at the top rushers in this NFL draft, half of them from the Pac-12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw half that. Of them for the, Half of them for the Pac-12. So come on, man, y'all like like I be telling people, y'all be be realistic with yourselves when you be talking about kids. Um, when it comes to Dylan Edwards, like I said, I don't look at Dylan Edwards as a running back. I look at him as an all-purpose back, um, where he can line up all across the field and get used in certain situations. Uh, it's just all about what what we want in that situation, what we're looking for. 
And I just also me think when we when you sit down and you look at what we're going to do with a Dylan Edwards, we're going to try to get him the ball in all type of different spaces to, for him to be explosive and take and do his job, which is make explosive plays for 20, 30 yards or more. Um, so that's how I, that's how I envision um, when you talk about comparisons, right? Uh, I look at the mm-hmm. Tavon Austin's in the St. Louis Rams when Pat Sherman had Tavon Austin, what he did with him. He didn't just line him at, at wide receiver. He would put him out and running back. He would run stuff in the NFL for Tavon Austin, uh, who was coming out running 4-2 out of college. Um, and he would use him in, in different type of ways. He would put him on punt returns. He would do any kind of way to get him the ball. And that's just how I envision him doing with Dylan Edwards, just finding ways to get him the ball in space and go. Okay. All right. All right. Let's talk about the offensive line. Jordan Seniors, he's looking very impressive, y'all. And I think he's the best offensive line they got. That IMG, from where he came from, I think Coach Ray said from Florida, they turned this dude into a bully, man. <laughs> this dude. I mean, that's what they do with IMG. Like I told you, it's a mini college, and that's why he's ready for for college because that's what they do. They prepare you on the media side, on the football side. But I'm not going to be disrespectful and say that George C is my best offensive lineman. I think he's in the top tier. Uh, I like Vincent. I like uh, – uh, it's a couple other guys that already got starts under their belts. And when you're talking about a kid that ain't gave up a sack and stuff like that in in college, we're talking about Jordan coming from, from, from high school. But we're talking about a kid that's done played power five football – you know, I would never be disrespectful and say that, you know, but I think all of those guys are in the top tier. Um, but George Cena showed you that he is as advertised, that this ain't just no hype, that this ain't just no talk, that this ain't just somebody just came, that I just went to camps and because I was the biggest guy in the room, they gave me the star. No, when I came, when I got on the football field, I dominated. And uh, he feels that way. But what what you saying be is that's how he feels now. But that's how that's how you want. And it's a man. I, I keep telling people offensive line is you gotta want to. Oh you yeah. You gotta want to. It's, it's a want. Oh, it's yeah. a want to position. It ain't a. Oh, yeah. It ain't a. It ain't a position that you just. It's a want to position. And there if as a bust about George C wants to wants to impose his will on kids, and that's what he's doing. And so yes, for us that's a great pickup. Uh, and he's showing people, and he's coming in, and he wants to show people that he's that he's worth everything that uh that you see so uh yeah i i just think uh he's in the top tier i just want to say he's my best because like i say it's kids that done played in the college and, and to me that'll be just a little you know a little kick in the face for them who done went out there and then gave it's a couple of kids that ain't gave up sacks maybe gave up a sack and that's in power five football so that, that's the only that's the only no, that's the only thing i'll say about that i know that i like i like i like justin myers too and uh player benson but the improvement that Jordan Seaton has made since he connected with that strength and conditioning coach. But my concern with him when he first came in was just upper body strength. That was my biggest concern, but he had the feet work, he got the hand work, and everything that I saw on the videos when he was in high school, my concern was his upper body strength. And it looked like, you know, he'd been working on that. Rob, what do you think about the offensive line? Our best offensive lineman is our coach. Our offensive line coach feel right. Him teaching technique and uh, just giving him the little nuggets to be successful. Um, I don't want to put nobody above nobody uh, right now. Saying who's our best offensive lineman because I look at them as a unit, right? We want we want to make sure we unify across that board. Whoever the first starting five is, we want to make sure we unify. So I don't want to put change the narrative. Say this person better than this person. Leave nobody out. I just want us to be unified, and I just. You know, our coach, right? Our offensive line coach is our best offensive lineman. The person that's been there, that's done it, uh, who's going to help lead this group to be successful. Um, now, Jordan Seaton was a hell of a recruit, um, five-star that we got, which is a major addition that we needed. But at the end of the day, we still got to prove it. We still got to go out there and play on Saturdays, and let's, fi- let's really find out what we really have. Because it looks all good on camera. We still got to go show it. I agree with you on that. Yeah. You got to put up a shutter. You definitely got to do that. All right, let's go to the wide out room. Wide out. Got Travis on him. We got, uh, let's talk about this slot receiver, uh, Jante Webster. I'm looking for him to be the leading wide receiver in yardage wise. 
Will he play the slot or will they move him all over the field, Coach Dre? I think uh, I think he I think he can do move all over the field. I think with the with the rotation, I think it's gonna be more of him being in the slot than anything. Uh, he's a great pickup. No if fans and bust about it. Uh, the kid, he, he's a he's a he's a pro. Uh, he's quick. He's fast. He got great hands. He runs great routes. Uh, when you turn the when you turn the film on last year and you watch uh, Florida Atlantic, you better find out what number one is. You better find out real quick. Because if you don't, he you, you find out no no sooner as he turns the you turn the film on. Uh, the kid that's impressing me is is Miller. The, the leaps and bounds that he has made from last year to this year uh, is amazing. And what yeah. he's telling and what he's telling people is, ain't nobody just going to come in here and overlook me. If you're going to come in here, you're going to battle me to, 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 to just put me over here on the sideline. And I'm ready to go. Uh, we know what Travis Hunter is. Jimmy Jimmy Horn is going to Jimmy Horn is going to surprise some people. My boy my boy getting healthy. My boy working on his craft. Again, an- another thing, he ain't talking. But we but we but we but we hear we, we hear you talking. We hear you talking. You understand me? <laughs> yeah. we, we hear you talking. We hear you, we we hear all we hear, we hear all of that. And we taking notes. You understand me? We taking yeah, notes. So, 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 Coach Ray, you still about that Florida connection, man. Oh yeah, man. Listen, listen, boy. Listen, boy. But not for him. It's a little more because he you know, he came down here and played a couple of our teams down in Gainesville, and he did like when when you see a kid that did every, like people don't know he played he had to play quarterback in high school because he was just his, he was the best athlete on his team, and so for you to slander a kid like some of the slander that that kid taking, yeah. But just 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 know we taking notes. We taking notes. Uh, you know, Will Shepard is an SEC receiver, so he gonna come in here. He he proven. He proven that he can play with the big boys. When you came to play Vanderbilt, you better find out what Will Shepard is. So we expecting him to come in here and do a kind of what uh what Zay did last year because they didn't they didn't participate in the uh in these uh winter workouts, but he was there for the he got there in the summer and he took off, and that's what we expected for Will. Same thing with Baby To. We expecting him. We expecting him to come in here and be a big body receiver that can uh, give us uh, good possession, uh, good possession routes and stuff like that. And then Caleb, and then Caleb Mathis, like like his shirt say, if y'all ain't seen the Silent Assassin, the best. He just quite basically the best route runner I've seen in University yeah. of Colorado. And he gonna do everything right. He gonna run great routes. He gonna catch the football and. Shador trusted, and when you got the trust of your quarterback, that's the that's the biggest thing. You can't you can't you can't never uh, go away from them guys that you trust. Uh, so, like I say, and then you got the two freshmen that's gonna come in here. We gonna see what Ooh. they can do. You get what Ooh. I'm saying? So, yes. what I'm telling you is, and you hear it here first, that Colorado got the best receiver room in the country. Country, yeah. Not not the Big Twelve. I said Colorado has the best receiver room in the country. I'll go with you on that. Hey, Lane, check this out. Uh, I did a broadcast Thursday, and Big Hell T said he got Cordell Russell coming in to take what you call position from Batonville. Big LT, you don't have to call. That's one of, that's one of our LT, you're going to have to explain that to your boys. Hey, LT came and said he looking for, he, he looking for Baby T.O. to take Will's spot by game five. 100. Oh. I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, I'm, just, lot, I'm just being honest. A lot of people are sleeping on Will Shepard because of, they looked at Vanderbilt. And you put a real quarterback with Will Shepard, you're gonna see what it is. It's just like Zay Weaver all over again. Zay Weaver 2.0. That's all it is. Um, I think I think Will's gonna end up being a leading receiver uh, when it's all said and done. I know people look at the speed and, and the explosive plays and things like that, but Will's gonna be on a mission because he's trying to get to the NFL just like Webster. And so if you think that he's coming here to sit on the sideline or coming here to let somebody take his spot, that just ain't going to happen. Um, and a lot of people are sleeping on the Marion Miller. I've been telling you, I've been telling you, he's going to be the kid that y'all need to watch out for. They can have a breakout season. They can make it yeah. close plays. They can line up all across the field. You don't just got to line up on the outside. He can play in the slot too. And what you're going to see out of this offense with Pat Sherman, you're going to see these route receivers move around. Um, I don't think you're just going to see them line up in one spot. They're going to move around this year. 
Um, it's going to be a lot of rotation because of how many receivers we got. So you, there's going to be some proof of, you know, what's going to be shown. But when you when it's all said and done, we got a hell of a receiving core. Uh, and it's how you keep everybody happy. That's a good problem to have. Uh, but we'll see when it's all said and done. Um, game one. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they got the best wide receiver group in college football, man. I, my concern is how they going to keep them all happy. He must gonna have some package for him. The uh, offense coordinator. Uh, he should uh say that again. What you said, B? I didn't hear you all the way. I'm trying to figure out how he gonna the offense coordinator. Uh, Pat Sherman gonna keep all those receivers happy. You gonna make yourself happy? Go out there and work. It it, it it'll work for you. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. it. Like I say, eight. I got eight. I got an eight man rotation. So. Uh, we're going to either be three wide or four wide. When we four wide, then that means the tight end ain't in, so that's four receivers. Okay. When we three wide, we got a tight end. So what I'm telling you is everybody, gonna, you're going to get your opportunity. Just like Coach Prime told them people in their last practice, everybody got their opportunity, didn't they? Yeah, you get, he said so that. Have you, so have you seized your opportunity? Have you taken advantage of your opportunity? And if you do right. that, you yeah. ain't going to have no gripes, nothing to say, because you seized your opportunity. I thought, yeah, he did that. The easy way to keep all everybody happy, just keep getting first downs and keep scoring touchdowns, and everybody be happy. Check this out. I saw in the video, I don't know if y'all saw it, I saw some do up under the center. Y'all see that, folks? Yeah, we saw it. Just just more just just more for the haters to talk about. And so we so y'all can y'all can scratch that off your hater list that Shadow can't take snaps from under the center. We're gonna show y'all that this year too. So you can be quiet about that. Oh, you don't do nothing but take the ball from shotgun. That ain't how they do it in the NFL. Well, we showed you we could do that too. So, you know, but again, man, y'all keep on. Y'all, like I say, we keeping receipts. Keeping <laughs> receipts. I, I just, when you look at, you know, them finally seeing Shador take snaps, it, Shador's never had a problem with taking snaps underneath the center. It's always what the offensive coordinator wanted. Um, in that situation with Pat Shermer, you're going to see more NFL pro style offense in a sense. You're going to see him um, take, you know, um, underneath the center. You're going to see him in the shotgun. You're going to see him in different personnel sets. You're going to see a play action, true play action, you know, putting it in the gut and taking it out, you know, and throwing it to a receiver. You're going to see a lot of different things that you didn't see last year. Um, and one of the things right now is you got to stop comparing what you've seen last year to this year because truly you don't know what's going to be shown because you're not going to see it on film during the spring game. I I can't tell you enough how everybody that thinks on this, you know, spring game, they're going to see what this defense really looks like. You're really not. They're not going to show you the scheme that they're going to run. So you can guess 4-2-5, 3-3-5. You're not going to know in the springtime because they're not going to put it on film. They're doing that for a reason. Right now, they're just evaluating. And a lot of things on offense is going to be super, van super vanilla um, that you're not going to see. But they're going to do a lot of different things to get you do it ready for the NFL this season. And you're going to see it all pay off. All right, we got Big Ike at some uh, super chat to you, Rod. Saying happy Easter to everyone. Best wide receiver group in the nation. Best quarterback in college. Everyone can eat if they trust the process. I agree with him on that. I agree 100% with 100. Y'all know Big Eye? Yes, sir. Okay. We thank, we thank you, Big Eye. Appreciate you. Salute to your big brother. And let's move it to the defensive side before we hit that back and five. All right. Let's look at uh, – I want to look at that cornerback side. The opposite side of Travis Hunter. We know Travis Hunter is going to be a starting. Uh, Cornerback. I want to look at the other side. Uh, Kamadi got Kamadi and TJ. Uh, what is what is name? Uh, DJ. DJ. Uh, what is DJ. name, Coach Jay? DJ McKinney. 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 Who who you think gonna come out on top over there? Uh, uh hold on, Coach Jay. Hold on, Coach Jay. <laughs> I already know he gonna say. I'm talking to the chat. Chat. Who y'all think gonna come out over there? On the defense side, that defensive cornerback is it going to be Makata McClain, Kamadi McClain, or is it going to be DJ McKinnon or somebody else that we're not talking about? Go ahead, Rod. 
Uh, I, and to, to be told, um, it's going to be a battle. Um, to me personally, I don't care who starts, whether it's DJ, whether it's Kamani. Um, in that sense, I don't really care. The reason why is just gonna, to me, it's about who finishes the game. Who's right. out there on clutch downs and third down scenarios? Who's out there? You know, that's what's going to matter. Because we can go across the board where we can play Preston Hodge, DJ McKinney, Kermione, and Travis Hall out there on the field and go and go 150 high. We can do that. And that's one of the things that you got to love about this team with the versatility of the defensive backs is we can go single high safety and put four corners in. Okay. And you can line Travis up anywhere on on at any corner, whether that's a slot, whether it's outside. You can line up Preston Hodge inside, outside. You can line up Kermione inside, outside. You know, um, DJ, same thing. So when you look at this Ram and the argument is who's going to start, it truly doesn't matter who's going to start. Who's in there on the key downs when it matters the most? That's what's going to be most important. Can you get those stops on third down uh, when we need to? Can we stop the simple slant routes, right? Those are the things that's really going to matter uh, when it's all said and done. Um, but if if I had to go right now, I'm taking Kamani McClain with Travis Hunter. Coach Drake? Uh, I'm in sentiment what what Russ said. Uh, it don't matter to me who star. It matters to me who finish and who in there in the close in the clutch down. Who in there getting third? Who get who in there on third down when we got third down and long when we know they passing, and uh, you coming up with the big stop. I mean, everybody knows my fascination with commodity, but DJ has played, and you got to take that into consideration. Uh, he has the game time experience. Uh. But what I know is that we're gonna play the best guy at the position, and it's good to have this kind of this this kind of competition because uh, I don't think you go wrong with either one. And like Rob said, it's a lot of defenses where you can put all of them on the field at the same time. So, I mean, it's a it's a plus for us as as the as as this goes along. But like you say, if you if you just had to press me, you know I'm going with one all day every day. But right. uh, I just think we're in a great situation. And like I say, DJ's played and he has the experience. And uh, I think that group, that room is really, is really pushing each other and really want to get better. So I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with everybody, but you know, I like the way Kamani is playing. He long, and he give you, when you got to throw that ball, when he, when he reaches his hands up, the arms up, it's a long way to go. So that's, that's why I give the edge to him. Wow. He got a long haul. You think Cooper got a chance to get back on that rub? Uh, well, they got him at safety right now. Um, so um, what they're looking at is, you know, what his position to be in the NFL versus college right now. So um, Cooper has a chance, but I think he stays, ultimately stays at the safety, the, in the safety rotation uh, versus corner rotation. But still, still a long time to see, but we'll see. Right. Yeah, it's still a long time to see. I was uh, I read an article last night. It was by uh, Glory, Colorado, by Andrew Hughes. Uh, he was talking to the Jante Weapon. He opened up about his decision that the wide receiver to transfer to CU. And he's talking about Coach Prime. He said, Coach Prime is just, and just the environment is like a family. It was the best fit for him and his brother, Jalen, the linebacker. He said it was a big jump for them because. We, they came from Florida, but we talk, we've we been taking risks all of our lives. So me and my brother Jalen, it was a no-brainer for us to come here and get the exposure and get the, to be coached by NFL talent coaches. Uh, they, he was saying they played in the NFL. They can let us know the things that they went through in the NFL so we can make it to the NFL. And he said that was great for them. So. What kind of culture, uh, Coach Prime building up there, Coach Ray? I mean, uh, he building a culture that and a coaching staff that can teach kids how to get to where they want to go. You talking about field load hole? You talking about the offensive line coach? He's played in the NFL. He knows what it takes. You cornerbacks coach has played in the NFL, played on good teams. He know what it takes. You got your extra defensive. Either way, you, you slice it with your defensive line. Sal, they say when Sal was in college, he was an All-American. The, the kid, D. D Lewis, he, he played on arguably the greatest, 
the best team in college football at the University of Miami. And then uh, you don't need to even talk about SAP. His, 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 you say SAP and everybody know what you're talking about. Coach Hart is just he, – he, he's a proven football coach to me, and I don't care what nobody say or what nobody thinks. Uh, he, he moved himself up through the ranks. He got state championships. He got three state championships in college. I mean, in high school, he uh, he went to, he went to uh, Jackson State and picked and coached on the best defensive staff and, had, and coached the best linebackers in Auburn Miller and, and uh, Davis uh, Brown, all those guys. So uh, and then when you go to you go to the offense, you got Pratt Sherman over there who's played in the, who who's coached in the NFL, been the head coach. You know what he's looking for? You look at the receivers coach. One of the best to ever do it in college. He played in the NFL. So what he's doing is putting these kids in the best position to to, to listen to guys that's been in they've been in their position and the, been where they've been, sat in their seats and got to the next level. And also you what you see is guys that's relatable to these kids. Even though they're older guys, they try to understand where these young men are coming from. Sometimes you just got to talk to some, some of these young men. Western just told you we had to bet on ourselves. You get what I'm saying? Right. You get what I'm saying? One thing we say down here in Florida, you got to get it. We, we get it out the mud. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes you have to go somewhere and wash off, wash off all this mud. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes you have right. to go somewhere and wash off all this mud. So they went up to the Colorado to wash this mud off to get this exposure so people can see what, he, what you is. And this is something that is, that's really profound. Only in the dark, only when it's dark can you see the star. Only when it's right. dark. Only in the dark can you see the star. And that's by you saying you that, star. by you saying that, Rob, if that line is his brother, Jalen, that star. Uh, he definitely can be. I mean, he's sideline to sideline. He makes plays all over the field. Uh, but, you know, they hit it right there in the head. It's a exposure piece, right? Uh the, the easiest way to move up the job board is have eyes on you. Who's coming to FAU to see you play versus who's coming to Colorado to see you play? That's that's the biggest they thing, did. right? Um, this day right there sells itself, right? If you can do it at FAU and then turn around and come to it at Colorado, but now you got all eyes on you, you can't discredit nothing. And so it's about helping them get to their goals, their dreams, and making it to the NFL. And the only way you can do that is – you got to go prove it at a higher level, right? They've proven what they can do in college, but now going to go play at Colorado, it's going to be different. It's going to be different because all eyes is going to be on you. You're going to be under every single microscope you could be. There's not going to be a day of practice, a game that it ain't going to be scouts in the building. And as long as scouts are coming to see Travis and Shadori, you're going to have your opportunity to get seen. Exactly. That's just the bottom line of it, right? Yeah. And so yeah. the numbers are going to go through the roof based upon – Travis and Shador. Now you get to see the other talent. Now you get to see, okay, they got some defensive linemen that could possibly be drafted. They got some other receivers that could be drafted. They got some DBs that could be drafted. So now you can't say you don't got the opportunity. You don't got the exposure because it's in the building. Now it's all on you. Or you going to want to put the extra work in to get yourself to your ultimate goals and dreams or you sitting back waiting for it to come to you. Because if you sit back waiting for it to come to you, you're in the wrong place. It ain't going to happen. You got to want to do this. The only way you can build confidence is you putting in the work. A coach can't give you confidence. Now, he can show you the way, but you right. got to go put the work in and build great habits to be confident enough on your own to know that you do it. Because if a coach got to motivate you to go out there, you ain't meant to be out there. Man, I agree with you on that. That's a good take there, Rod. Coach Ray. Let's talk about defensive line. Who's who going to be that standout defensive line that going to – that gonna catch a lot of attention that people are overlooking, right? Uh, I mean, I got a multitude, right? My, for me, I'm I'm big on the interior lineman right now. Uh, I know we got the D the DNs, but I'm big on the the interior lineman. Uh, Shadozi and McNeil are my two my two guys right now. With Carter being my third guy, those are the three guys that I'm really focused on right now. I want to come to that defensive line because we gotta control it off the middle. We get we can start controlling up the middle and makes the game easier for everybody, and that's what the the benefit of having Warren Sapp there. He's gonna teach the guys how to control the middle of that field to get us to create pressure up the middle and help those ends get better, and our defense becomes a lot better. I mean, he hit the nail on the head. 
Um, that's what you got. That's what Sap here for. You finna hunt. You finna, like he told you when when he when he first talked. You finna teach these dogs how to hunt. Right. And so when you so uh, McNeil already got that motor. Oh, he got a motor. Shadozi, Shado, he he demands a double team. Like right. people people, I, I hear a lot of people holler about his numbers, his numbers, his numbers. Go watch his field. Every time he's on the on the on the field, he demands you block me with two people. If you don't block me with two people, I'm going to disrupt this thing. But if you block me with two people, it should set up for somebody to come through. That linebacker should be free. McNeil, I mean that kid. That kid doesn't have a motor. Carter, Carter is what he, he SEC talent. Right. Uh, it's a couple of other guys that's back there that, like I say, that with with Sap being here, uh, it's gonna help. And then again, it's gonna be a rotation. So I don't never want to say. I think the the unit is going to be better. I think the unit the unit is going to be better because now you have the 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 quality of football coach. Not saying that Coach Sal isn't because I love Coach Sal, but you just have guys that you get what I'm saying. When when Warren right. Sapp talk, and when you when when Warren Sapp do this look and go to do this, you 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 feel you feel it in your bones a little different. You get what I'm saying. Right. So uh, these kids gonna be like I say, these dogs finna hunt, and uh, that's why Coach Prime went and got some of these kids, and uh, and I and I'm, I'm I'm excited for them as a group. I'm excited for them as a group. To piggy to piggy back even more, they're gonna be they're gonna ask some more D linemen. Yeah, I believe they are too. I think Coach Prime already done got a couple of them on committee. He just ain't said. They it's yeah. it's a couple of players in the portal. Don't don't worry. Yeah. I believe so too. All right, let's get off uh, the topic of Colorado right now. Well, y'all been checking out the uh, the women's NCAA basketball oh, tournament. Boy, yeah. huh? <laughs> I don't mean to throw the chat off, but we gotta switch this thing up, man. Let me tell you something. Oh, yeah. Boy, LSU kind of scared me the other night, but they came through. Cause that number fifty one. Well, she was putting it work. She was putting it down. What her name? Bet. Lauren Betts. Yeah, she she was going to work, man. I like man. I'm telling you, the women's NCAA basketball tournament is more exciting this year than the men. I guess because my team lost North Carolina. Now I see that Duke no lost. But uh, but the women's man, you gotta like. I like Angel 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 Reese for LSU, Kaylin Clark for Iowa. But I'm telling you, that Juju Watkins from uh, USC. She, man, <laughs> she she can get down with it, boy. <laughs> she can get wow. down with the best of them, man. So, uh, who do y'all like out of them three? For me, I'm going Juju. There's nobody Juju. in women's college basketball that can guard Juju one on one. I promise you, there's not. She's going downhill. She's going to attack. Um, what I would say with that that UCLA and that LSU game. The storylines dictated that game. There was no way in hell that they was gonna let them lose. The LSU yeah. lose because they, they won. They won't they be that matchup, though. They wanted to see the rematch with with LSU and Iowa. That's all it was. Was building the storyline up. That's all it was. Because here's a little background for those who don't know. Lauren Betts and Reagan Bears. I coached against them and I beat them in some championship games. So I know them personally in the state of Colorado. For those who don't know, both of them girls are from the state of Colorado. Lauren Best is the number one player coming out of Colorado. Um, and Reagan Beer was the number nine coming out of uh in the nation. So I know them two personally. Uh Oregon State, they lost today against South Carolina and uh UCLA. So I know I had two girls there personally that I know what who they are, what they do, they game inside and out. They was not gonna let UCLA beat LSU. The storyline, the money, the build up, it was just it was too much for it to to go that way. Um, but you gotta the and, the and the reason why I say this, as long as LSU keep playing Haley Van Lit, they're gonna have some problems. They they need to put her on the bench because that's all way they're gonna win. Um, but they got what they wanted, right? The rematch LSU versus Iowa. So can't can't go wrong with that. What up, Coach? Who Drake? Mean, Coach Drake? Drake? Personally, <laughs> my favorite player is Fly J. Johnson. I think she's the real deal. Oh, and she you know, is. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Coach Moki, we need to go. They need to go through. They need to go through her with the basketball. Uh, because when you got Van Lint on the basket, bringing the basketball up, 
it, it, it be problem. We look like we struggle. When you get the ball in the hand, uh, we, we get able to work. Um, like yeah. I said, I like uh, all of them have been playing, but I just like the old thing right now. Now you got you got to yeah. get some credit to South Carolina though. Uh, you know, it's still undefeated, still moving right. on. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, this next game how they do. Uh, but the way the storylines are adding up, it looks like it's gonna be LSU versus South Carolina for the championship. That's I'm just telling you how is the storyline that's lining up. Now they will take Caden Clark, but if you want to talk about the ratings and the money. Is it's setting up to be an LSU versus South Carolina all day long? You can just say, you can just tell. But Kellen Carr is gonna be special this this next game. Um, I like LSU, but for some reason somehow that it just it's always something, and there's always storylines for LSU, uh, especially with the articles that came out, you know, with the uh, Los Angeles Times things like that. Um, but it, it's just building up to be a South Carolina versus LSU for the championship. Okay. Chat, what y'all think? Am I tripping or not? Let me know, chat. Let Talk, me know. Hey, chat. Who y'all? Who y'all got gonna win it all, chat? Talk to us. It's but gonna be USC, LSU. I want, I want, I want thousand percent agree with you. The women's basketball game, the elevation of the game is way. The quality of the game is way better than the men's. Um, you really don't get really excited for nobody on the men's side like you do the women's side. When you watch these women play, you get excited what you see the product that's on the that's on the on the court. Uh, with all the top players that's playing with the Juju Watkins, you know, the Kalen Clarks, uh, and the story goes on and on. There's so many players that you can just go. And the game is going to get better because there's freshmen that's going to come in that's going to have a name, going to have a buzz with them next year that a lot of people don't know that's going to show America that what it is. So uh, the women's game is caught, caught up with the men's game, um, and it's going to continue to grow. Yeah, I agree with you on that, man. I, hey, I hey, on, hey, hey, on that note, any college basketball team, Power Five, is a coach down there. She ain't on the contract no more. By the name from Jackson State, boy. If you want about, you want a quality, if you want a, if you want a quality ball coach, you go get her, boy. Name Tamika Reeves. You better go. You better go get her. What her name? Hey. Tamika Reeves from Jackson State. You better hey. go get her. Hey, you you're talking it. about a dominant coach who's won a swag, who's got her team to the to the tournament, who's performed at a high level, who's an upset at Power Five teams, that's been put the work in at HBCU, did it the right way. Hell of a coach. Somebody better go get it. Somebody better go get it. All right. All right. All right. All right, bro. You making that case for well, all right, guys. Let's start this rapid fire. Just need one answer. Chat, if you don't mind jumping in, because it's going to be a good one. I can't wait to hear the answer on these. Special Coach Drake. <laughs> All right, rapid fire. Here we go. We're going to start it up right here. What the question is soft drinks, Coke or Pepsi? Come on, Coach Drake. Pepsi. Rock? Pepsi. Chat, Coke or Pepsi? Chat, this rapid fire. Then we're gonna jump right back in uh Colorado. All right, second question. Hey, you on a date? You on a date? You don't cook, you don't cook for them and everything. You look in the refrigerator, you got red wine or you got white wine. Which one you got? Which one you serve? Hey, it's her preference. Coach Dre don't drink, so it'll be her preference. Coach Dre drinks <laughs> water. You got her. No, oh no, Coach Dre. You gotta ask some questions. It's gonna be red wine. Oh, white wine. Again, it's going to be, uh, I don't drink, so I wouldn't, I, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> and what you going to serve? Uh, I'm going to ask you which one, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask which one it is, because I don't drink, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Talk to me, Rob. Well, depending on the race, but I'm going to go with red wine. Oh, I always red. You always go red, Coach Drake. That's the safe side. I always go red. Appreciate the chat. Uh, let's see what the chat say. Chat's on that red wine. Uh, T Nicole, whoever that is, said red wine. Get her. Oh, I ain't gonna say that. We don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen uh, Woodland said red wine. Uh, Willie Beeman said red wine. Well, that T Nicole, a hundred mil. I need it. Well, 
Tina go crazy, whoever that is. <laughs> but uh, okay, check this out. Uh, boxing. We're gonna start in boxing. Who's the best champion champion of all time? Mm. Dre, make the case for Mike Tyson. Rod, you make the case for Floyd May Mayweather. Come on, Dre. I mean, when you, when you talk about Iron Mike, I mean. The most fearsome, the most feared boxer they ever they ever walked the planet. They ever walked the planet. I mean, when he walked down, when he walked down the aisle, you you were frightened. And you know the fight, and you knew the fight wasn't gonna last long. I think some I think some of the people pulling at him uh once uh he, once Custom Model died. I think if Custom Model don't die, I think Mike Tyson becomes you know maybe the greatest uh heavyweight of all time. I think the demons and the people not Leading them in the right way, but you talking about the most fierce uh, boxer to ever to ever walk the planet, and that's Mike Tyson. I'm talking about you see 60 years old, and you see him hit the pads. He still look pretty fierce to me. I don't know what Jake Paul thinking when he get in the ring with Mike. Listen, a hundred mil, I need it. <laughs> don't hey, undefeated. <laughs> hey, that's all you gotta say. <laughs> Write it out to me, cause. Hey, make one of some nails, baby boy. Hey, you got that dude's gonna make a lot of money, Coach Drake. He had, I mean, when you when you talk about the you talking about the paper king, the, the pay per view king, uh, undefeated, uh, he's fought everybody that I, you know, that you can say uh, in the ring, um, but. No one feared. No one feared him. They knew that Floyd was gonna shake and move and and, and make you miss and, and, and uh, counter punch and stuff like that. Mike might not do none of that. Might not do none of that. It's Mike cool, not doing none of that. That's what. How are we gonna talk about Boston? Not talk about Bud Crawford. Come on, Terrence Crawford. Ooh, Give me Terrence Crawford, about, baby. What we talking about? What we talking about? Give me Terrence Crawford. We, what's up? He ain't I mean, the best ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. He ain't he the ain't best ever. But I'm saying, pound for pound, right now. Give me Bud Crawford. Oh, I get, I get that crazy. He did what well. he did. He did. I get that wrong. I can't argue with you on that. Right, I can't right argue now, with I'm taking Bud Crawford. That, that's what I can't I'm argue with you on that. I can't argue with you on that. But uh, guess what? one thing I know about Bud Crawford, he gonna want to. He want to fight. He want to be in a dog fight. He don't want to. He want to be in a fight. And he wants the best of the best. I'm gonna uh, give me Bud Crawford. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Next question. Let's go to rap music. Kendrick Lamar, uh, Kanye West. Who you got, Rod? Hmm. I'm going Kendrick. I'm going Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I'm going Kendrick. Kendrick. What? Why? Why? Just because of the lyrics? Yeah, he gonna. But see, Kendrick, he gonna make you think. He gonna. You know, he gonna he gonna talk it to you. He gonna make you think. You know, get a get a lady's Lamar and give him some red wine, and they good. <laughs> they good. Yeah, I I don't know about Lamar, but I but I, I know about that red wine, but I keep me some. Yeah. Matter of fact, them, get them Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> got, it. got it now, boy. <laughs> Shoot. All right, uh, Coach Drake had to step away. All right, it just. You in the chat right now, uh, Rod. Uh, hey, chat, let hey. me know. Let me know if I'm tripping, chat. Let me know. Let me chat, know. talk to talk to uh, Rod, chat. Talk know. to Rod. Let's see who I got here. Coach Ray. Let me add him back. Let me know if I'm uh, oh, Coach Ray can answer the question. All right, Coach, Coach Ray, you ready? Can you hear me? Coach Ray. Can you hear me? Go ahead, go with the next question. You, you fine. You right, I'm with uh T Nicole. T Nicole might be all right. I don't know who she is, but I like the old school Kanye. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Coach Ray, he right, went away again. All right, yeah, that, all right, Ron, here we go. Here we go, Ron. The new Kanye, nah. Huh? I said the new Kanye, nah. I mean, the, the nah. Old, I like the old. Kanye. I like the old Kanye. Yeah. yeah, I like I like the old Kanye. But check this out. Uh, all right, Rob. You got a two-hour drive. Two-hour drive. No red lights. No stop signs. You just going two hours on a trip. What CD 
is going to play and take you for those two hours. What CD are you playing? Dang. What CD? Can't be one. And who the artist? Who the, I just want to know the artist. Me, I got Babyface going to take me there. Babyface, all 12 songs. All 12 songs. Babyface going to take me there. Who you got? All right, chat. Y'all let me know who y'all got. T. Nicole, you been acting today. Who you got? Dang. One, one CD that's going to take me two hours. One CD that's going to take you all the way for a two-hour drive. And who the artist? Who that artist is? Yeah, one one CD is hard though. That's hard. One CD. A, see, for me, I'm gonna go with Tupac or NWA. In that Ooh. NWA or Tupac. One CD. One CD. I go with that. So Dre, who you got? Uh, we going with one CD. Tupac, Machiavelli. Machiavelli gonna take y'all out. We got T. Nicole said "My Life" by Mary J. Fly. We got uh Devin, maybe one on the book. Uh all access sport meetings say young Jesus, Anthony Steele said Earth Wind and Fire. I go with y'all on that. I can think, I can rock with that. Life Jenny, and that's a good one. I like that. Hey, life Jenny's gonna have you in your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nah, bro. laughs> He gonna really have you think of car playing my life in two hours. <laughs> oh but all right, check this out. All right. Uh, who's the best black African American best actor between Denzel Washington, uh, Samuel L. Jackson? Who you got? I'm, I got Denzel Washington all day long. Yeah, and I got Denzel. Like no, it ain't. It, I mean, it ain't. You know, no, no disrespect to Sam. I like Sam, but yeah. you know, Denzel the man. Yeah. All right. I got. You. Okay. All right. All right. Uh. What that question there? Hey, military. If you had to go to the military, who you going which uh branch you gonna enlist in? The Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine? Anybody out there in the military, put it down in the chat. Military. Yeah, first of all, salute to everybody in the military. That's, that's we salute y'all. Salute to everybody in the military. Um but Air Force for me, Air Force for me. Air Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably go Air Force in a sense, yeah. Air Force? Yeah. I agree. I agree with y'all on that. I agree with you. Air Force all day. Uh I still said Army all day. They said Air Force. That's an easy answer. Tina Cole said Samuel, but I'm going Denzel. Steve Woodland said Air Force. Appreciate your chat. Willis said Air Force. All that's what I said. He said, if I had to redo it again, Air Force. <laughs> oh, man. If I had to do it again, so it quality of life. All right, Mr. Woodley. Is anybody in chat have been in the service before? Yeah, I got, y'all I got in my, my entire family been in this service. I just didn't go. But I yeah, didn't, if I, didn't if I had to, to see what they went through and the path they went through and the after fix of being in the military, I would go Air Force. Okay, chat. Y'all help me out, chat. Check me out, chat. Help me out. Four. I need your four Mount Rushmore of female singers. Mm. Don't matter who from the past or present. I just need four. Come on, Rod. Start me off. <laughs> four. I'm, Mount I, Rushmore. Four female singers. I got to put Mary J. Blige in one. All right. That's one. That's one of them. That's one of them. Not my top. I it ain't got to be in the order. Um, now I gotta think on this one because it's it's on it's on it's on it's somebody's I like though. Uh, dang, four four the top ladies singers. Top ladies. They ain't gotta be top. Your four female singers that you will put on Mount Rushmore. I'm gonna take uh, dang. The chat now helped y'all on one on. Um. See my dang, I like Aaliyah. I like okay. Whitney Houston. Yeah. Um, um let me see. You you could put Patty LaBelle in there, uh Reefa Franklin in there. Come on, bro. I just need four. You can't put all six on. Oh, no, no. I'm just I'm just trying to name off names so I can so I can get my four right. Uh I'ma go, I'm gonna go Mariah Carey. Okay. Uh, 
Patty Lavelle, Aretha Franklin, Mary J. Blige. That's my four. Top I'm going to go, right? go old school. With you. Whitney, Aretha. Alicia Keys and, and, and I'm gonna go with and I'm gonna go with Pat. All right, I'm going Mary J. Blige. I'm going Riri, Janet Jackson, and Whitney Easton. That's my vote. All right, check this out. We're gonna start with the female singers. Alicia Keys, uh Ella May. I'm going with Alicia. Who the, who is it again? Say it again. Alicia Keys or Ella May? Alicia Keys. What? Oh, Ella May? Wow. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Y'all shot me on that one. All right, Jackie. Especially you, Rod. All right, check this out. Best rap group. Outcast or the Migos? Outcast. Yeah, Amigos. Boy, the Migos. What you, what you say? Outcast? Okay. Oh, I, like the, I like them outcast boys, the Atlanta boys. I like them boys, man. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm from Atlanta. Okay, okay. I know the Migos is new, but you know, I like the outcast boys. Okay, I got you. Check this out. Baseball. I thought he was going to go with another group. Honestly, when he said the best groups. But oh, I'm coming, I'm coming back. I say you now. Uh, you must have read the notes. <laughs> I skipped them. I, I want to know you. Check you out with baseball. The best three home run hitters that you have seen in person or on TV or read about. Read about three. Uh, it's it's got to be it's got to be Hank Aaron. You got to talk about Barry Bonds and uh and Willie Mays for me. Willie Mays for me. Number three. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for people who I've seen. Um, I would take Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, Barry Bonds and, and Mark McGuire, because I'm I'm from St. Louis. So I seen Mark McGuire personally up and close in person. So, uh, without all the cheating scandal and all that stuff, purchase okay. home right there, I would go with those three. Okay, somebody say Coach Brown, Coach Brown, that home run right here. <laughs> Man, she been drinking some red wine. <laughs> hey, check this out. I gotta go. Y'all never seen Dale Strawberry play? Yeah, I, yes. did, I I I mean I saw him swing. Red Jackson, Red Jackson, I, 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 I like I, I Red Jackson and Barry Bonds, man. Them them guys get that ball. All of them are left handed, man. Now I seen all three of them in person before. All right, check this out. Uh, RB group, best two RB group you have seen in person for me. Best two is gonna be uh, New Edition and the Jackson Five. Michael Jackson mm. with Michael put that on. Who you got, Dre? Mm. Uh, best R&B group. You got. I mean, you you gotta go with. Um... Just, somebody beat me in the chat. Said Jones. I, I was just about to say. <laughs> 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 you got. You, that was Jodeci. Go with, you gotta go with New Edition. You got. You gotta go with New Fact. Edition and Jodeci. With 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 uh one okay. twelve getting honorable mention. You can mix in boys to men in there too. You can mix in boys to men in there. Uh, oh. I'm going to addition in, in boys to men. Okay. Uh, see you, Buff Dynasty said, uh, Hey, I, I saw him on y'all. Oh, he's going to be on y'all platform. Yeah. Boy, he, he be getting them hell, boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he said, "Boys to Men and Jodeci, uh, T. Nicole said, Dynast, the Destiny Child, and SWV. Now, I like SWV. I like both of those. Uh, Mr. Woodland said, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Boy, he went way back. Franklin <laughs> Beverly <laughs> made. Woo-hoo. Boy, you're telling on your age, Mr. Woodland. Okay, we talking men. Uh, she said, New Edition and Boys to Men, 112. I like 112. Uh, the five heartbeats, Greg said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, King said, Tony, Tony, Tony. Okay, all right, all right. Y'all, y'all with the program. Y'all with the program tonight. Hey, NFL quarterback, who you take? Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes? Come on, Drake. We're going with, we're going with the Florida boy, Lamar Jackson. 
All right, give me the ring. I'm going. I'm going pack. <laughs> give me the ring. He going pack. Okay. All right. All right. I'm, all right. Let's check this out. Say what? I'm taking a ring all day, baby. You go, gonna take the ring on that? I, 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 I go with you on that. I go with you on that. Uh, what's that other question I had? I had two more questions. I don't know what I did. I wrote them on a separate page. Let's see. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, I come up with something on my head. Check this out. Coach Prime. Defense cornerback. Cornerback. Well, he batted at Dallas Cowboys or the San Francisco Giants. I mean, San Francisco 49. Or it's cornerback. Uh, I think, I think he could be watching now. He could be watching for you. <laughs> His best years, I think, was in Dallas. I mean, he played one year in San Francisco, and they did win the Super Bowl and everything. But I think his best years were, were in Dallas Cowboys uniform, no doubt. Yeah. I'll feel the same way. Same way? You think he was better than he was in when he was in Atlanta? I mean, he built he built his brand in Atlanta. I mean, it's probably if you, ask, if you ask Coach, he'll probably say that Atlanta was where he built his brand. Uh San Francisco is where he probably tuned it up, but then I think it was a, it was a finished product by the time he got to Dallas. It was a finished product by the time he got to Dallas. See you, Buff said Dallas. BKFT said Dallas. Okay, all right, all right. Bo Jackson, or Herschel Walker, best running back in college. Uh, go, I'm going with her shell, man. I'm going with her shell. <laughs> I'm going with her shell, man. You, you, you can't fight over her shell, Bo Jackson. You you can't no, you her, can't. Her shell was something different. He was a different animal. Well, he was different, man. He was just, yeah. Ron I mean, looked like he, like, like he caught between two rocks. He don't I think am, Hershey, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Hershey, but man, you can't go wrong with either one of them though. Can't go wrong with either one of them. Can't. All right. The best performance. Check y'all help me out on this one. I think I think Rod gonna slide to the left on this one. All right. The best performance. Or as quarterback in college football, Cam Newton or Vince Young? I'm going Cam Newton. Ooh, okay. Boy, what that boy did at USC for the national championship, it'd be hard, I, Chris. I, it'd be I, hard. See, that's, that's I only, ain't looking at that one game, Dre. That, that's the only thing people can but, but, just but, take but that one game. That's the only thing, but what he did the whole we, 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 oh, are we talking about? Oh, we not talking about one game. We talking about the whole, overall, yeah, it's Cam Newton. Yeah, it's oh, okay, it's, okay, it's, okay. The whole season, you got to take Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll give you another question then. I'll give you another question. Who got the best performance in the championship game? Tim Tebow or Vince? Or Vince? I'm going Vince. Huh? Yeah. I'm going Vince against USC. I'm, I'm taking it all day long. Oh, yeah, you got to take that. I mean, Tebow, I mean, it's y'all like I'm from Mill, so you get what I'm saying? People just wrapped up in the Tebow mania. You get what I'm saying? And he's a great guy. You, you ain't gonna never hear nobody. Yeah, he is a great guy. I ain't gonna take that from him. Yeah, he's a great guy, and people love him to death. But when you just talk about when you put the tape on and you talking about USC, people think USC one of the best teams they ever they ever played, they ever played with Reggie right. Bush and Matt Lyman and Lindell White and all they had. And for him to go into their go into their place to win a national championship on the winning drive. You gotta go. You gotta go with Vince. See you buff down at that Tim Tebow. I mean, y'all ain't gonna push back on. That's y'all boy. Y'all ain't gonna push back on. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I, like I said, I tell you, people get get get. Caught. Listen, that's why I tell people all the time. When you when you go to talking about best quarterbacks ever in college, he gonna always get brought up. But it's just it's the hype behind him and, 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 and the, the good things that he did in the in the in the great he he he's a he's a great leader, he a good football player, and then he a good person. I got nothing bad to say about him, but what I'm saying is what Vince did to go into USC against one of the best teams in college football. And like I say, I mean we got it done. He got Tebow got it done, but then we couldn't come back and get it done the next year. You know that's when that's when I was rooting for the Gators when they had when they had the old thug as, as the head ball coach. Mm. Okay, who had a better baseball career, Coach Prime? <laughs> oh, hold on, <laughs> oh, you gotta hear me out, man. I know he watching. <laughs> who had a ba better baseball career, Michael Jordan or Coach Prime? That ain't even fair. That ain't that ain't. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Yeah
here's my thing though. The SEC is not there's no east and west no more. So it's just a, whatever your standings is, right? It could possibly be five. And if five could come out to LSU or it could come out to, to Bama, we still don't know what Bama's gonna be yet. And that's the mystery team of all, right? Because everybody's not is everybody's counted out Bama. Bama could surprise some people this year. And those are the things that we gotta they got a they got a good coach that knows now how, how you gonna say Bama can surprise and Oklahoma ain't gonna surprise. They don't have the roster. They Alabama the ain't roster. got the roster. Alabama still got talent that's there. That's better than Oklahoma's roster. They still have former five stars and high four stars on that roster. That's one thing you can't take away from Alabama. They still got studs on that team. Now, they, they were able to get one of their offensive linemen back, but they still got a bunch of talent on that team. You can't count them out in that sense. It's all about their quarterback play. It's ain't, it's ain't Nick still walking the halls. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, see you, Buff. Dodgers said LSU defense is suspect. It was suspect last year, ever since uh, Coach Kelly been there. They don't have the talent. It just ain't. It just ain't made it there. And he also said Texas, UGA, the only thing that felt, Ole Miss, the LSU. That felt LSU last year was they was they secondary. They going they gonna get that problem fixed. They, they, they gonna get they, that. Yeah, they front seven was fine. It was they secondary that killed them. They they corners, but they they'd be a lot better this year. Wow, I, he <laughs> keeps saying five, man. I, but and, and here's what I say: if L, if LSU don't get to the playoffs this year, Brian Kelly's out of there. Exactly. He got to go. He thought he gonna get that that's Alabama job. That's why. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all. That's why. He, He's suspect, man. He's not a real. He might be. He might. He might be suspect, but he's getting. It. You think? I, so how many Big Ten gonna get in there? Two, two, two and two. Ohio State and Oregon. Oh yeah, I got about Oregon. Ohio State yeah. and Oregon. Two and a possible. That's what I got. Two and a possible. Who the other team might be a problem? Uh, be, I can't, I can't you, count on Michigan. I can't count on Michigan. Michigan. Oh, I'm finna say you better not say Michigan. No, I'm saying Michigan. You can't, you can't count on Michigan just yet, because they, they Why? do, they do got a bag of quarterback. That, that's really, I, I like them a lot. I like them a lot. They, their okay. defense, they still got their best two defensive players that played in, that played in the national championship game. So I, I got it. I got Michigan. I'm gonna roll with Michigan. I, I, I got to I gotta give. Gotta get a black head coach of love, man, because you, you still can't count them out yet. Okay. Uh, I, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want I want I want them to get in, but I, I only got Ohio State and Oregon. And I got my no so I, I got I got five I got five from the SEC, I got one from the ACC, I got two from the Big Ten, and then my bias is we're gonna get two from the Big Twelve. That's it. And then the other team gonna come from the uh from the other conference. Test, test. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yep, yep, you good. All right, but check this, check this out now. You don't think Notre Dame gonna get in? Nope. For nah. what? No. Nah. They got a tough schedule. They're not gonna get. They gonna have too many losses. I, I just, for me, when Notre Dame is gonna come out to their quarterback play, like most teams, I just think their quarterback is gonna cost them a game or two that they should win. They gotta be I, ten and two. They gotta be ten and two. Nine and three ain't gonna get them in, and if they ten and two and they don't lost to, a, like that ain't gonna get it. I, I don't think ten and two gets them in. They have to be like eleven and one. I don't think ten. That's what I'm. So that oh, what that's too much pressure on them, man. How you ain't in no conference? I know, but that's, they ain't that's, 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 that's the true thing that hurts them. They're not in the conference. Yeah, they, so they ain't in no conference. Have to go I know that. one. And that's what people gonna be. That's that's the thing people gonna be hollering about. B. They gonna be like. Well, they ain't in no conference. They ain't have to play nobody. They ain't have to play in no conference championship game. So no, like I say, okay. Russ said Russ said eleven to one. I say if they ten and two, okay maybe, but not. But I think they're gonna be like nine and three. So no, I don't got them in there. I got five teams from the SEC, two teams from the big from the uh from the Big Ten, one team from the uh from the ACC, and then two from the Big Twelve, and then they got to put in the. One the conference champion from the Mountain West or 
the, or the other conference, and that's going to be your 12. Wow. All right, chat. If y'all got a question you want me to answer, Rod and uh, Coach Dre, put it in now. We'll get it from him. Uh, we're going to hang in here. For, I'm going to try to hang in here for 20 more minutes. I'm trying, I'm trying to sell the show. They told me I need to eat. <laughs> I sent it to Spectrum. They said, hey, you need to make it an hour or an hour and 30 or two hours. So I said, okay. So we don't went over that uh, uh, one, one hour and 30 minutes. So uh, I got to take it to two. two. I hope y'all hang here with me. So uh, when it's over, I know uh, Steve is tuning in. He probably won't say, but he said he's going to be tuning in. He tuned in last week. And also, we got a sponsor. But the question was, uh, they asked me, they want to do the whole month instead of the uh, one Sunday. So I told them yes, but I sent them the information, and they were going to get back with me sometime this week, and I'll let you know, Rod and Dre. I'll let y'all know. But uh, check this out. If uh, Coach Prime, I better not say that because he could be watching, but I'm going to say it anyway. If Coach Prime wins the next, is he leaving or is he going to stay? Not, he's not leaving. There's no need to first. Uh, even probably to be discussing that no more. I think he's uh, sold on where he is. Um, I think a lot of college coaches do that. And I just don't think Coach, Coach Prime not moved by money. He not moved by the allure of what somebody else. He, 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 he marches to his own beat. And I think he's found his home. I think it's a few college coaches that I can think of off the top of my head. If they'd have stayed where they was, they would be big. They, they'd still be good right now. When I think of Charlie Strong, when he was at Louisville and what he was building at, at, at Louisville, he left to go to Texas. And I understand it was Texas and it was the money. But I think if he stays at Louisville, he's uh, he might be build, he might build himself a dynasty because he had the Florida pipeline. He had been in Florida a long time. But uh, he's not yeah, – I don't think it's another – like. Um, I'm not saying going to another uh, school. I'm not saying what he – since you do it and shallow moving on, will he just give up coach? And like uh, I think Greg, I think Greg said it. Uh, I had him on last like, guest Thursday. He said, uh, if he don't got Shiloh and should do it through college, what else he want? He ain't got nothing else to prove. I, but but again, Coach Prime is who he is. That's his calling. He's called to be to be a coach to help young men. I don't think it. I think people get wrapped up in in coaching when coaches coach and their their kids play, and thinking that's what it is. I, I had that same thing going on with me with people thought well oh, he might be just coaching because of his sons but n people like i i think i told the story once before i'm standing on the sideline and people didn't even know that was my son out there playing because i wasn't i just i'm just not that stand-up dude rah rah and hollering and doing all of that i didn't do all of that it is coach dre is who i am that's that's my calling that's what i'm supposed to do to help young men get to be better uh young men so I just think Coach Prime is – I think he found a home at the University of Colorado, and that's where he's going to be. Well, here's my question, right? Where can he go that makes sense? You know, and that's where I'm – not, I'm not saying go nowhere else. I'm not, I'm not trying to get him. I'm talking about just quick, Coach. I, I just, Maybe I didn't say that right. Yeah, so, Coach, for me, Coach Prime, he wants to coach young men. Um, he, he wants to impact him – in the right direction versus, you know, trying to coach grown men. So in a sense, is he the, he's going to coach or he's or he just going to be done? In my sense, from everything that I can fear, looking at the situation, I just don't, I just think he's just going to stay there and um, stay coaching, right? I don't think his end all be all is going to be, you know, coaching his sons and that's it, right? Right. Why get it? Why get into it if all you want to do is coach your sons? It just doesn't make sense, right? You been you was coaching high school, you know, all American games. You coach your sons in high school. You've been doing all this, and you can really impact the generation of kids and do different things. I just think he just he's in his element. He's in his his vibe, and I just truly think that he's gonna you know stay and do what he do what he wants until he's enough's enough. 
Uh, because like you said, the money, the money doesn't drive him to do anything else. And there's not a situation where it makes sense for him to leave and do. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, once again, we thank everybody for tuning in tonight. If you don't mind, on Raw channel, my channel, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share the video with your friend at tonight broadcast. It's sponsored by State Farm Insurance. Uh, we want to thank them for sponsoring the broadcast tonight. And we appreciate it. And we hope you come back and sponsor again. We really do. And somebody texted me uh, just a while ago saying, do you have to be a, do you have to have a business? No, you don't. You can be an individual. You want to sponsor the show? Sponsor. Contact me, Rod, or Coach Dre. And we'll, we'll, we'll send y'all sponsor the show. And we'll appreciate it. All right? All right. Yeah. But once again, Rod, I'm trying to sell the show. I don't talk Comcast and Spectrum. Everything I used to do my TV show all spectrum, so uh, I think it's a good show. And I told them they they watched it, and they said I need to cut down, uh, even it off, and that's what I'm trying to do. And I hope Pastor Smith tuning in, <laughs> he said he's gonna help me. So, hey, all right, check this out. Who on the Colorado team will be? The defensive player of the year. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, just off the top of my head, I'm gonna go with Sim and Craig, just because I just think it's hard in his determination, the things he's done, the stuff he's overcome, and if he's on the football field, he makes plays. Uh, like I say, everybody we can say Travis, uh, and, and everybody knows that. But I'm looking outside of the outside of that spectrum, and for me, it's a, he 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 epitomizes what a football player is for me. He epitomizes what a football player is for me. Um, and I uh, I think uh, he I think he got honorable mention last year. I know he he I think he tied the team in picks, and he didn't even start. So uh, for me, it's going to be Silman Craig. Wow. The way I look at this, it's easy to take Travis. It's easy to take, you know, Shiloh and, and really just be out, right? Um, but I truly – I just believe this year there's going to be one linebacker that's going to step up and take reins. Uh, and the reason why I said it is because everybody is so harping on the linebacking group and so down on the linebacking group that I just truly believe one, there's going to be one that's going to step up and that's going to take the reins. Uh, so I'm going to go with Webster on this one um, as the defensive player of the year for Colorado. All right. I didn't want to talk about that line back group tonight, though. But no, you're, you're fine. I just, I just think that they're going to prove a lot of people wrong uh, that, you know, because, well, I, well, front, because, it, because of the front four is going to be so much better is going to help the linebacking group. Okay. And that's, when, that was the biggest key last year, and I think a lot of people missed out on it. If your front four ain't good, it's going – your linebacker can't be you – no. Know, they can be better, but it's hard to be better if, you know, the the linemen are getting up to your linebackers. And, you know, so I just truly believe that our defense line is going to be a lot better than it was last year. Again, let's just – when we look at linebacker play, right, when we look at the best linebacker, you talk about Derrick Brooks. Well, who played in front of Derrick Brooks? Warren Sapp. You see what I'm saying? I wish. Ray Lewis. Who played in front of Ray Lewis? He had a couple of guys that were all pros and stuff like that right there. So when we go to thinking about uh, or, or trying to discredit these guys as bad linebackers, you got to also talk about how – just how bad of how 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 we didn't grow as a defensive line. I don't want to say bad. How we just didn't grow as a defensive line last year. And now with you getting the best that you can get out of these young men, you should get the best you can get out of your linebackers. Again, I expect the kid like Victory Johnson to jump off of the board. Uh, like I said, I like Webster. I think again, I think Bentley might have a better season. Um. You got Grant, 
you got a couple of other kids. You got kids in that room. And, and I think because we don't talk about them or you don't hear them in the news, we just think they're a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of just a bunch of guys that can't play. And that's just not the truth. And you won't get me to say that. I, I believe in Coach Hart wholeheartedly. And so I think he's coaching these guys up to become uh they're gonna they're gonna like Rob say, I expect the linebacker room to shock, shock some people. Um uh, and believe me that they listen and they hear the narrative. So sometimes when we see those bad plays, y'all don't think they just they put they put them bad plays in there so y'all so people can run with the narrative. Just think about it sometime when we, when 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 you thinking about what's going on. And so y'all he just let y'all keep running with the narrative and then boom. Now the, the linebackers come out there and they having good games and now everybody sitting here with their mouth with them with their with their mouth wide open looking Looking, looking, drop, drop, draw, cause you know it wasn't nothing. Oh, we didn't see that coming. Oh, where that come from? Oh, that was... yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So, like I, like I say, I'm gonna keep saying this. Jackson State had the best defense in the country, not just in the HBCU. They had the best defense in the country, and Coach Hart and Coach Mathis both were on that staff. So that tells you a lot about what I think about that coaching that time. I just think people think that there's no evaluation at the linebacker position. That is. You don't think that they don't know that they need to go get a linebacker or two? You think they don't – they ain't assessed that in the portal yet? They have. It's just a lot of things are not being shown for a reason. It's a storyline. They let you run with the narrative. And as long as they got you running with a narrative and a storyline, guess what it's doing? Just create more attention to see you and for something for you to look at. That's it. And like I said, I just truly believe that the linebacker position is going to be a lot better than it was last year. Whether we add some players from the transfer portal or not, there is going to be some changes in that linebacker room. So you don't have to agree or disagree with me. You don't got to believe me. But like I always tell y'all, when storylines are being created, it's being created for a reason. And y'all just running with the narrative. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about the uh, special team. What y'all think about the special team this year? It's gonna be a major factor. It's gonna have some close games. The kicking game gonna be all right this year. Do that punter come back this year? Uh, we did just add a punter. Uh, we just got a commit for a punter this season. Uh, our punter is coming back, but we just got a uh, commitment tonight. <laughs> Uh, from a punter for the upcoming season. Yeah, just got just got it. I think right before we came on, I, I think the kid committed. Uh, he's a punter, uh, but I like model. You know, you gotta like feeling, and then uh, the emphasis on what our return game gonna look like. Right. I think I think the two freshmen are gonna impact. That's where you are gonna see their impact. This year, right. if if I if I had to, you know, pick a place for those freshmen to impact us, I think it's going to be in the return game somewhere. I can see Draylon or, or Cam McHale uh, doing giving us something big in the special team game somewhere, whether it be on kickoff, kick return, something like that. But that's where they're going. That's where they're going to uh, scratch their niche this year, uh, because right now, I, like I said, I got them on the outside looking in on uh, my receiver rotation. If somebody get hurt, then they, they, they step into the eight-man rotation that I got at the receiver spot. This has always been my downfall with Coach Prime. Special teams. Always. I don't care what year, every year, it's always been a problem with special teams. Um, with the rules changing, with the coaching staff changes for the NCAA, I think special teams will be better this year. Uh, we have better depth this year, so hopefully we can put the second team – out there on special teams and not the four strings and walk-ons out there. Um, and that's for, you know, kickoff, uh, kickoff return, punt, every, every just overall in general. Um, I like our return. I like our return specialists this, that we have this season. Uh, I do think we make an improvement there. But overall, just you talk about kickoff team and punt coverage, um, improving in those areas and then field goals, you know, Improving in that area, um, having depth is going to be the major key with our special teams. And I truly believe that, you know, this year we should make a jump. We should. 
based upon the players that we subtracted versus the players that we added. And that's always been a hold up, you know, with Coach Prime and special teams. But I think they put more emphasis on special teams this season more than any other season they have in the past. Man, what's going on with all the talk about Caleb Williams, man? Quarterback from USC. What you, they say y'all just acting like this, bro. What, what's going on with him, man? I don't know, bro. I mean, you know, he, I mean, you know, he, he's number one pick. I don't know. I mean, he can throw the football. Uh, he had a good meet. He had a good pro day. Um, you think Jalen Daniels got a chance of being number one? Uh, no, I think I think I think the Bears sold on on Caleb. When you send your when you send the receiver that you just picked up from the Chargers to his pro day, that's a pretty clear cut sign that you pretty sold on the kid that you want. Uh, I think Caleb is uh is who they want. I'm not saying that he's the best guy because if I was if I was drafted, I would be drafting Penny personally. But uh, you know, that, that's yeah. that's just no here nor there. But I think they sold on the kid, and, and I think he's a good kid. I hope, you know, but it's it's the organization that I got a problem with. It's not actually the Bears or their team. I just got a problem with the way sometimes they run their organization. So, but I think the Bears is going to take Caleb. Uh, I hope he gets his character together. And they, it, that comes to what you see a lot of stuff going on with a lot of NFL players. It's because their character wouldn't check when they was coming up. They was always the best – and everything and you in and, and people sometimes uh if young athletes are in here or even young adults stop hanging around people that's just just yes me is what you call them uh people, i ain't your friend if i can't call you and tell you you wrong now you get what i'm saying if me you and and and, and uh bro we somewhere and I feel like you're doing something wrong. If I can't pull you to the side and say, "Hey, bro, that ain't you know that wasn't no good look. That ain't that ain't straight." And, and you not jump down my throat and you not say, "Oh, bro, I got you. I feel you." We really ain't friends. We really right. associates. Yeah. We really associates. You understand me? Right. So I think some I think some of these young men need to get with some people that that care about them, that love them for not not for what they can do for them, but love them for who they is. Because right. a lot of them, they got a lot of people around of them that's around them because of what they can do for them. So that's the biggest thing. All right. Ron, I'm going to ask you one more question. I don't want you to tell with that. And we're going to get out here. we got 50 seconds. left. Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors? Marvin Harrison Jr. All day? All day. No consideration? Nope. Wow. Bro, you know what that dude did at LSU? Had eighty nine catch and hundred. I, uh, I, huh? I get it. I get it. If if Ohio State threw the ball more, Marvin Harrison Jr. would have had the same amount of production. Right. <laughs> it, it's just a, it's just a product of your environment. That's that's all. You can't you can't teach size when you six four. Because here's the thing, Marvin Harrison never ran anything. So when y'all looking at numbers and trying to compare this and compare that. I'm just gonna take the size and speed, his hands. Uh I know one thing about Marvin Harrison. He comes from a great I'm not saying that you know never doesn't, right? But when you got an NFL background dad that, you know, is arguably, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, only one of the you know, top receivers that play in the league, you just got a little extra in this too, right? And he's one of those kids that he's produced just like his dad did. And you're gonna see you're gonna see uh, in the NFL. Okay. All right, guys. Um, thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, that's the end of our show. We appreciate each one of you. If you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel on mobile. Leave a comment. And Rod, got any closing words you want to say before we go? Uh, appreciate everybody uh, coming, checking us out. Uh, you know, I wish we show every Sunday. Uh, you know, you can always come pull up on us every Sunday. We'll be here in the building. Uh, come check us out. Uh, we got some things coming up this week as we lead up into the spring game. 28 days away, spring game. Uh, you know, we ain't hard to find. I'm not going to tell you what my plans is for spring game, nothing like that. Uh, but we will be in, in Colorado in the building for the spring game. Uh, so that's all you need to know from that point. But, man, appreciate everybody. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure y'all subscribe to both channels. Hit that notification bell so when we go live, y'all know. It ain't going to be no hidden surprises. Y'all know every Sunday we here. Oh, Dre? 
Hey, you know, uh, we appreciate you, man. I hope everybody had a blessed day. I hope everybody had a good Easter. And you know what Coach Dre say as he leave. If you send no ships out, no ships will come in. And if there's no contest, nobody can win. Games can't be won if they haven't been played, and prayers can't be happy, can't be answered if they haven't been prayed. Again, this is a B Watch uh, TV show. That's Rob the Man Media. I'm Coach Dre. Appreciate you. We love you. We out. All right. My last word is whatever y'all do, just be consistent about it. Be consistent about everything that you do. And what are you willing to sacrifice? If you got an idea, execute it. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. And if you believe in yourself and believe in your idea, it'll work. I promise you. But you got to be consistent. Once again, thank you for tuning in tonight. Happy Easter to all of you. I appreciate the time that you tune in to this broadcast. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for subscribing to the channels. And thank you for participating in the chat during the broadcast that we, whenever we come on. Like Rod and Dre say, we'll be here every Sunday. You can count on us no matter what at 8 o'clock p.m. And once again, always remember, if you be good to God, God will be good to you. And until next time, each one of y'all be blessed. And in two, also your entire family. Thank you for tuning in to Sports Talk. We'll be watching Entertainment. And Rod, the man, media, and Coach Drake. Peace.